All right, so before you start solving some advanced algorithm and learn about data structure, let's first talk about big O notation. So big O notation, most likely you have heard of this before. Uh, it's basically used to denote how long uh, the algorithm is going to take as your algorithm is given larger amount of data to process. Uh, it also refers to uh, the amount of disk space or memory space needed uh, to run the algorithm successfully as your data sets get larger, as n gets larger. So here I had a, um, uh, I just used a simple uh, graph to illustrate uh, so that we can visualize this. And you may have seen this before. So if the algorithm is uh, the order of n or has a big O notation of n, then the time complexity or the time needed to finish the algorithm grows linearly as n gets larger. So you can imagine if you're sorting through an array or sorting through numbers of n size, if your algorithm is order of n, and if it took 10 seconds for 10 data, as you increase uh, the data full by 10 times, then the runtime will also increase by 10 times. So that's the uh, order of n. The okay, all right. So um, this one, the green one, shows the n log n. So initially, it kind of behaves like the linear. So it's not bad, but soon it kind of curves up, right? Okay, this is n to the square. You can see that it the computation time needed goes up very very steep. There is also n to the square, n to the third power. That's even worse than n to the square. Now Computer is pretty quick, right? So you may think, oh, you know, even if I have an algorithm that's n to the square, what's a big deal? You know, computers can run lots of computation every second. Well, I prepared another visual so that you can kind of you can kind of see this. Uh, before I go to the visual, uh, you might be wondering, what is this yellow thing? That's log n. Log n is amazing. Uh, it doesn't grow very fast. Uh, as n gets larger. So if there is a way to do the algorithm using log n, that's better. If not, see if there is a way to do it on. If not, then see if you can do it uh, using n log n. If not, see if you can do n square. Never really do on the n to the third power. That is just really, really bad. Now there are other own notations. For example, um, there is a 2 to the n. 2 to the n is horrible. And if you're doing uh, recursive Fibonacci, just the normal plain way, that's order up to to the n. So later in this module, you will learn some other techniques you can use where whenever you're using recursion, uh, you get it down to the order of uh, order of n even. Um, so anyway, you will learn some of that tricks using dynamic programming, and you will also learn binary search tree where some of the search algorithm uh, that's normally done in n to the square, you will see how you can do it again in log n as well as n log n. So uh, these data structures can come in handy because what would normally take maybe um, order of n square using some smart algorithm, data structures, and some recursive uh, behavior with dynamic programming you can get it down to these graphs. Isn't that amazing? Okay, let me let me show you this. So um, this one is just to help you get an intuitive sense. So let's say uh, these are the different O notations, big O notations. Let's say we're just talking about the runtime or the time complexity, and we're measuring that big, uh, through the big O notation. You can also do separately, okay, well, uh, how much this space or memory space do we need for N? and is it, you know, do we need n to the square disk space as um, n gets larger? But let's not worry about the disk complexity or the memory complexity. Most of the time when people talk about O n notation, they are talking about the runtime complexity or the time complexity and how it scales as n gets larger. All right, so O of log of n, the runtime is some multiple times log of n. O n, just multiple times n and so forth. Where, where does this multiple come in? Well, it comes in multiple factors. For, so for example, I just have a text editor over here, right? If you're doing some 
performing some instructions, right? And let's say that you have a for loop from 1 to n, and you do some other instruction. Okay, and this, let's say this is the beginning of the for loop, this is the end of the for loop, and you're doing more instructions, right? All of these instructions take time, right? So if you have a lot of instructions, k will be large. If you don't have a lot of instructions, k will be small. Also, k depends on the, uh, on the computer. If you have a fast uh, computer with high CPU, where it can perform each of these instructions very quickly, then k will be low. Uh, k will be low for a faster computer, faster CPU, right? So those are the things that just kind of get, you know, um, combined into that factor k. But usually when you're building an algorithm, you don't care too much about what k is. So we don't have to really worry about that. How can you easily tell? There is an easy way to tell if the algorithm is order of n to the square or order of n. Order of n, if you have a single loop, that's usually order of n, right? I'm doing 1 to n, right? So as n gets large, I just perform this instruction n times, right? If I have a for loop inside a for loop that goes from 1 to n, that's very easy to see. You have n, and then you're doing n times again. So that's order of n to the square. Heaven forbid you have another for loop inside that, then you have order of n to the you know, third power, right? Now, as you learn about, later learn about recursion, which is really required for you to do some data structures, you will find techniques to not use for loops like that, but break it into recursive behavior, and again, cut the time complexity from something like order of n to the square to n log n, n or even log of n. Binary search tree, that's why people love binary search tree because it's, it performs the operations, uh, the lookup in log of n. It's amazing, all right? So up to now, you probably have done some sorting algorithms and most of the sorting algorithms you've done is probably on the order of n to the square. And when you learn some data structures, you will see how you can get it up to this. Okay, but what does that even mean in terms of the time? So let's say that k was 0 0.0005 seconds. Okay, let's try to build some intuitive sense on this uh, big O notation and why it's meaningful and why uh, during interviews, interviewer might be concerned uh, about um, the effective or the efficiency of your algorithm. So let's say that you, n is 10,000 um, 10, data sets and k is 0 0.0005. If the algorithm is order of log n, it will take 0 0.002 seconds. That's really quick, right? Really, really quick. If it is order of n, 5 seconds. Okay, let's say 10,000, that's a big number. 5 seconds, I'm happy with it. What does your intuitive sense tell you when the algorithm is on the order of n log n? Is that going to be like 7 seconds, 20 seconds? Well, this is the answer. 20 seconds, not bad, right? This is still, you can wait 20 seconds. 10,000 data, sure, no problem. I'm not worried about it. What if it is in the order of n to the square? 50 seconds, 100 seconds, 14 hours. 14 hours to perform this operation. What about order of n to the third power? 50 hours, 100 hours, 16 years. So imagine you wrote an algorithm and it's taking 16 years to run and someone comes in who um, who has good programming IQ, and they convert it to order of log n. Everyone would be so happy, right? Your you, customers would um, love you because what took 16 years for your computer to do, now just with some algorithm, your computer's doing it at 0 0.002 seconds, they would love you, right? Okay, now what if n is 40,000? So we even increase this further, right? Four times is the, uh, is the increase in the data sets that we're analyzing. If your algorithm is log of n, how much longer do you think that's going to take? 0 0.002 hasn't really changed that much. It's almost like a flat curve, and you observe that when you looked at this graph. It's like it, it, n grows, but log of, uh, the log of n doesn't seem to grow. It's the same. Well, you can look at the decimal. It probably took a little bit longer, but not in a meaningful way, right? Okay, what if it is order of n? and the data size increased by four times. 
Well, should be four times five seconds, right? You're right. What if it is n log n? What used to take 20 seconds, now I quadruple the data size. How long is it going to take? 92. Not bad. You know, so if, if the algorithm is n log n or n or log of n, log of n, which you will learn some of these through data structures that you will learn through this course, it's not bad. As the data gets large, people aren't worried about it, right? It's usually about anything above this line over here, n to the square, n to the third, or 2 to the n, right? Which, you know, a lot of the recursive, if you don't do dynamic programming, you will get into that trap where it will just go on forever and it will be really, really bad. Okay, so let's come back to this, okay? So what took 92 seconds with 40,000 data sets, if your algorithm is order of n to the square, again, a lot of your sorting algorithms, a lot of things you have done has a two for loop, right? Nested upon each other. How long would that take? So 100 hours, 200 hours? 222 hours. So just by quadrupling it, what used to take 14 hours, that's manageable. You can go on a, you know, um, you can take a day off. Now you want to take 222 hours off, that's like 10 days off. Maybe they let you get by with half, you know, of your time being gone. Now data set got four times larger and you're going to take 10 days off because you want your algorithm to finish. See why they wouldn't like this, right? If, 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 um, your your engineering manager is like, oh yeah, my code is running, I'm gonna take a 10 day break because my code is still running. You know, they probably wouldn't be happy. Again, this is why during interviews, they want you to think about, you know, these um, time complexity for your algorithm. Because when your data sets is really small, you're not gonna notice that much difference when N is 10 or 100. But when you're, but if you're, uh, web application is dealing with large number of data. This really really matters Okay, how about order of n to the third power? It took 16 years. I quadrupled the size. How long is it going to take now? 1015 years, okay, it's like a new millennium. All right, okay, so you can see I and the reason I do this is yes you can do it mathematically and you know get this but I think it's important for you to get an intuitive sense and really know, oh, this is why the O N notation is important. Because, you know, no one wants you to run the code for a thousand years and say, um, you know, my code is done, right? Or, oh, you quadruple the size, so I need to, my code is now going to take thousand years, right? If they had someone, uh, they said, oh, you know, I can write that logic and I can do that in 92 seconds, right? Then your engineering manager would be a lot happier, okay? Let's do a little bit more. N doubles, now 80,000, order of log N, still 0 0.002 seconds. Isn't that amazing? This is why people love binary surgery and maybe this is why they like to ask a lot of questions on binary surgery because it's one of the um, data structure that really helps us to move what used to be in this category over to that category. Uh, some of the you know divide and conquer mechanism that you will learn through some of the data structures is order of n log n. And again, you're moving things that's normally in here up to this bucket, right? Okay, um, let me just kind of show you. So you can see, not bad, right? n log n, still not bad, it's reasonable. n to the square, 900 hours. This one, 8,000 hours. Oh, not hours, years, years. Wow, okay, so I hope this kind of, you know, you may have seen some of this, but I wanted you to kind of get some, that, some of that intuition, right? Knowing how to do things is important, but not as important as why we do things. So when we're doing algorithms, data structures, the reason why, you know, these things become important is because this really makes a difference right, in happiness of your engineering manager. So they're gonna grill you to see if you're thinking about, okay, do you have a two for loop inside your code? Is there a way to not do that, right? How do we do it? Well, you think about some of the data structures, you use recursion, but again, if you use recursion without some of the preventive measures, you're gonna build things that's even worse than these old, old you know, uh, n square and n, n third. Uh, it's exponential, it's worse. So then you use dynamic programming, use other techniques to you know, get it down to this level. 
and life is beautiful. Okay, so anyway, those are some of the objectives as you study data structures. Don't just be satisfied with, oh, okay, I know what these things are. Always have a high you know, level picture. These data structures are to teach you um, to think through how to solve a problem more efficiently. And yes, um, data structures are um, not really, you. in my career, I haven't used data structures that much. Um, to actually build an enterprise level application because a, lo a lot of what's needed to build data structures are more built into the operating system and the database and you know other lower level things that um, now developers use. But if you are creating a new language or creating a new framework or creating a new library, um, data structures will become extremely uh, important. Also, if you're building more of a native uh, desktop application, um, then you will probably use that and strong OOP concept a lot more than if you're using some open source web technologies. Regardless, even if you don't use data structures, it does get asked during interviews and most of the people who will interview you will be ones who actually built some of those lower level. Uh, and these are covered during uh, computer science uh, degree. So uh, we, I'm hoping that you will get some exposure and it's not that hard to learn. You can do it. Um, and if you get stuck again, watch how I do it. And data structure is not something you master. Um, it takes a long time for you to get familiar. Just get you get better and better. But I, I do think with this module that I've created, uh, you will save a lot of time. Because basically what took me a lot longer to learn, I tried to combine things and explain it in a way so that it would save you um, lots and lots of time. Hundreds, maybe even thousands. A uh, thousand or two thousand hours of self-study. Okay, all right. Good luck and leave some comments of what what you think and what you thought and leave some comments as if it, you know about whether this exercise was helpful to kind of give you a better intuitive sense on why the big O notation and how the efficiency of your algorithm is really critical. Okay, all right.